ozone. In the upper atmosphere, this layer protects our planet from harmful rays. But closer to home, it becomes the main ingredient in a destructive mixture of pollutants called smog. And with it come health, agricultural and economic consequences. That's why it's no surprise that reducing ground level ozone is a priority in almost every industrialized nation in the world. The first step is understanding how it is formed. Ozone is created through a complex chemical reaction between nitrogen oxides, volatile organic compounds, or VOCs, and sunlight. In a similar photochemical reaction, VOCs produce secondary organic aerosols, a component of PM2.5, a very fine particulate matter that poses a serious health threat. Since sunlight is obviously a good thing, reducing ozone and PM2.5 hinges on lowering the nitrogen oxides and VOCs in our atmosphere. Most nations have gone after the source that has been the largest contributor and one that's quite easy to see, exhaust or tailpipe emissions from vehicles. These efforts have been successful and the VOC reductions significant. So significant that further VOC reductions will require a renewed focus on a source of emissions that is much less obvious, but now exceeds tailpipe emissions. This scene looks innocent enough. The car isn't running and the engine is cool. But as the sun rises, inside the car, inside the fuel tank, the rise in the ambient temperature causes the gasoline to evaporate and the vapors begin to push air and VOCs out of the tank. The vapors are then captured by a simple carbon canister found on most vehicles throughout the world. When the car is started, the engine purges the canister with fresh air and recovers the vapors as energy. It's a good system, but it does have its limitations. You see, in countries outside of North America, the canister is only designed to hold the vapors for one 24-hour period. Beyond that, the carbon becomes saturated and the vapors escape into the atmosphere. These are evaporative emissions. In this case, diurnal evaporative emissions. It's important to note that 20% of all parking events last for more than one day. And there's more. Let's take our car and move it to a gas station where we find that the simple act of refueling a vehicle is costing us more than we thought. As fuel enters the tank through the filler neck, it pushes out air and VOC emissions. Seeking the path of least resistance, they exit the tank via the filler neck. How much escapes? Well, for every litre pumped, there are about 1.5 grams of emissions. For every 50 litres, that's 75 grams. And if you condense those 75 grams back into a liquid, 100 milliliters of liquid gasoline disappears into thin air. So, how much of a problem are these refueling emissions? If we use a figure of 100 million vehicles equipped with a basic carbon canister, over the course of one year, over 250,000 metric tons of evaporative emissions will enter the atmosphere. That's the equivalent of 380 million litres of gasoline, enough to power 200,000 cars for a year. Thankfully, there is a solution to this invisible and very costly threat. It comes in the form of a simple and low-cost modification to the vehicle. It's called ORVR, Onboard Refueling Vapor Recovery. Here's how this proven technology works. The diameter of the filler neck is reduced and a valve is added. The line leading to the carbon canister is replaced with a hose slightly larger in diameter. And the small carbon canister is replaced with a canister large enough to capture multiple days of diurnal and all refueling evaporative emissions. With the ORVR system installed, we see the gasoline enter the tank. As before, the vapors and air are forced out, but this time, unable to escape through the filler neck, they vent out through the larger hose into the carbon canister. The smog-forming VOCs are trapped and purified air is vented out into the atmosphere. As before, the engine will utilize the captured vapors the next time it's started. So, what is the impact of ORVR? If we return to our earlier model, 
and add the ORVR system to all 100 million vehicles, the evaporative emissions drop by a stunning 98%. Some countries are using a method called Stage 2 vapor recovery in an attempt to trap the vapors at the pump. They do this by covering the nozzle with a sleeve and adding pumps, meters, return lines, sensors and monitoring equipment that must be diligently maintained to remain effective. How does it compare to the ORVR system? Well, if we go back to our original 100 million vehicles with the simple carbon canister and we add stage 2 to the refueling system, we see that in certification tests there are reductions of up to 90%. However, this option does not fare as well in real-life applications. Equipment malfunctions occur. In use, Stage 2 only captures 60 to 70 percent of the refueling emissions and 0 percent of diurnal emissions. To make matters worse, not all gas stations are equipped with Stage 2. Obviously, Stage 2 alone is not the answer to a nation's evaporative emissions problem. It can, however, be combined with ORVR to achieve the highest level of control. Whether it's the health of our children or the latest figures for agricultural production, ozone plays a role. Luckily, it's easy to integrate basic technology that can capture multiple days of diurnal emissions and virtually eliminate refueling emissions. ORVR, a simple, low-cost solution making a world of difference.